Hey everyone, I'm Amanda with Sweet Pieces and welcome to our Monday live event. Apologies for uh, being a few minutes late, but we had a little bit of uh, difficulties. I forgot my tripod at the store. I'm always forgetting something somewhere. <laughs> it's just inevitable. So, you know, I want to get aggravated, but what's the point? I mean, it's just, that's just the way it is. So it's all good. We're here and we're live and we're ready to go. Um, so what are we going to be talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about painting kitchen cabinets with Jolie matte finish paint. So if you were watching last week, you saw that I was painting my mother-in-law's kitchen cabinets with general finishes furniture paint. So I wanted to make sure that I shared the love with all of the products that we absolutely adore. So today we're going to be talking about how to do your kitchen cabinets with Jolie. And we're also going to be, I'm going to talk to you about like how to choose which paint, because that's a question that we get a lot. And, um, you know, there really is no right or wrong answer. It's really, you know, what you ultimately decide, but it really depends on how you use your kitchen. Um, so anyway, I'm going to talk about all of those wonderful things today. So if you guys wouldn't mind, just chime in for me and tell me where you're coming to us from. I'd love to see um, where you guys are coming from. And then also, what are you thinking about doing? Are you thinking about doing your kitchen cabinets? Um, did you tackle your kitchen cabinets? Are you thinking about doing a friend's? Are you thinking about doing your bathroom? Um, because this also applies to... Um, bathroom vanity cabinets. So if there, if you have a need to do a bathroom vanity cabinet, um, using our products is a really great way to do that. So you can absolutely do that as well. So um, happy Monday. Uh, how's everybody feeling? I have to tell you, um, I'm sure just like all of you, I'm cycling between um, emotions, like almost on an hourly basis. <laughs> um, this is all very emotional and what the crazy thing is about all this is that there is we've never seen anything like this before right so it's no one has any answers you know it's just it's crazy it's just crazy so I'm just thankful that I have all of you guys to connect with and also um, you know I'm thankful that we have a business that is is in this home decorating type of thing because it kind of it keeps my mind a little bit busy which is which is nice and I'm, ho I'm hoping that you it's the same for you guys that it's kind of keeping you a little bit occupied and um, I know I'm certainly looking at my home very differently um, I have a very small home and I have oogled over very ginormous homes for a long time but you know I'm kind of at a place right now where I'm just I'm really happy and I'm very content and I'm just trying to focus on that and just um, try to do what I can with what I have and I think you know that's what God would want for us so that's that's the route I'm going so I am happy to tell you that my mother-in-law's kitchen cabinets are done and if I must say so myself they look pretty amazing I'm really really excited for her because um, like I mentioned she has desperately wanted a, a new kitchen for so long, but because of the way the house is laid out, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys some pictures in a little bit. Um, it's kind of tough to change it to change the layout because our house is really old. It's over 100 years old, so moving walls and taking things down is a huge project and a ginormous expense. Um, so you know, doing what we did finally, I was allowed to do it after so many years. Um, you know it came out beautiful and i think she's going to be really really happy with it so i see some responses here we have um kitchen cabinets and we have more kitchen cabinets and yes jill is talking and jill i need to call you i'm so sorry it's been uh really really crazy journaling that's a great idea i mean that's a great thing to do to kind of keep your mind busy um it's something that i used to do it when i was younger and i haven't done it in a long time so i need i should get back to doing that thank you jill that was it that's a good tip um okay so let me talk to you about um the process of painting your kitchen cabinets with jolie matte finish paint so i have all my supplies here for you let me just okay so here are all of the supplies. So ignore that side of the table for now. And this side of the table, we're gonna talk about um, the supplies that you need for Jolie matte finish paint. So you're going to need 
this is so important. We recommend this product and we tell people you don't have to use this cleaner on furniture if you're painting it, but if you are doing your kitchen cabinets, I highly, highly recommend that you use crud cutter. Pre-paint cleaner to prep your kitchen cabinets because kitchen cabinets have so much grease and grime on them. Even if you are a very good cleaner and you clean your cabinets often, like my mother-in-law does, she's a crazy person about cleaning. She cleans her oven like three times a day. Um, I don't do that. So even if you do keep and maintain a clean kitchen, you need to use this product before you paint your cabinets. So this is really important. And um, the other thing is that you have to understand this is pre-paint cleaner. I know this is backwards for you guys, but pre-paint cleaner, this is crud cutter is the brand, pre-paint cleaner is the product. So there are lots of other crud cutter products out there. You need this one. You need the one that is pre-paint cleaner. And we carry it at Sweet Pieces because like you guys know, we aim to be a one-stop shop, but also I don't know of any local stores that carry this product. So just make sure that you 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 use this. You will be amazed at what comes off with this. So what I usually do with this product when I'm doing kitchen cabinets, I spray it on, I give it a minute to kind of sit and then wipe it off. And what do I use to wipe it off? I use my favorite shop towels, sweet shop towels. So um, I always have a roll of these handy. And I use this, I use these shop towels for both the Jolie and also the general finishes. I always have a roll on hand. So Susan is asking, what if your cabinets are shiny? So um, if you have shiny cabinets and you're gonna paint with the Jolie matte finish paint, you don't have to sand them. If you don't want to, you can just clean with the crud cutter and then go ahead and start painting. So I'm gonna go through this process and then I'm gonna come back to that question a little bit, Susan, because um, I want to talk to you a little bit about why you would choose one product over the other. So let's just, I'll quickly go through this process and then we'll come back to that question. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and clean them. Once you're done cleaning them, then you're going to go ahead and throw a coat of paint on them. So I have a couple of cabinets here that I didn't use in my mother-in-law's kitchen because we swapped some things out and did some customization. And I'll talk to you guys about that as well. Um, some different ways that you can customize your space. So um, this door here, I painted one coat on and I'm gonna do like a glazing type of an effect. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that um, as my second step. These, I did actually prime these for my mother-in-law's kitchen because I wasn't sure if I was gonna use them or not. So unfortunately, I don't have like a, a raw finish to show you, but um, pretend this is just oak and I'm just gonna show you quickly how to actually paint it. Um, so this, is this product is super easy to use if you haven't used it yet it's so fantastic it comes in 42 gorgeous colors we also have this amazing paint mixing guide which has tons and tons of different combinations of colors um, using the Jolie colors as your base and then doing different ratios so we have these available in the store um, we should think about getting these up on the website. So when I say we, Julie, you know that means you. <laughs> um, so we should, we should definitely talk about how we could do that so people can see. Um, so anyway, 42 gorgeous colors. The color that I'm choosing for this particular cabinet is called Linen. Um, I'm using my Jolie Signature Brush. This is a small. I also have a large here, so large and small. I just grabbed the small, there was no reason for it. Either one of them would do just fine. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I stir my paint, mix it really, really well. I probably shook it. Um, I definitely shook it before I was on camera because I was painting other things. But let me just zoom you in here. And we do have a couple different options for green, Melissa. We have um, Petite Chateau, which is a really pretty green. I'll show you that in just a second. And then we also have um, a color called Sage. So I'll just show you because it's always good to have a visual. So basically you're going to um, dip into your paint. I like to get like a decent amount of paint on my brush and I'm just gonna paint. Now I always tell people the first coat of paint, especially with the Jolie um, 
but also you now general finishes I tend to put on a little bit more liberally but the Jolie paint I like to do kind of thin in like a thin coat I always tell I always refer to nail polish when I'm talking about this so you know you ladies know and we probably know even more so these days because the nail salons aren't open so when we're having to do our own nails um that when you do you know, if you do a nice thin coat, a couple of thin coats, it just, it dries nicer. It goes on easier, just like nail polish. I feel that the Jolie paint is the same way. So I like to just get a good coat on there, spread it out. Um, and it's gonna, I would say it looks bad. So that first coat, if it looks bad, you're doing something right. So, um, just go ahead and paint, paint, paint. And that first coat, like I said, is going to look, you know, it's going to look see-through. It's going to look kind of like primer. So can you guys see that? Let me tilt this up for you so you can see that. So see all the way at the top, it, it kind of looks like it's see-through. Um, it's not totally covered. It's okay. Just leave it be. Let it dry. Okay. Once you're done doing your first coat, you're going to want to let that dry. And... Um, it usually takes anywhere from like 30 to 60 minutes for it to dry. And after you're done painting that first coat, then you can go ahead and put your second coat on. So your second coat is really, it's, it's, if you need it, you know, sometimes people do one coat and they love the way it looks. It looks kind of distressed and aged. Um, they might just get it on there perfectly. That's okay. So you're going to layer on as many coats as you need to, to get the coverage that you're looking for for your kitchen cabinets. So Melissa is asking if I thin out my paint at all. Mine seems, she says hers seems very thick. So, I mean, I don't in general usually thin my paint out. I mean, I guess sometimes I do. It really just depends. So let me revise that. If you start painting and you feel like it's really thick and it's almost like getting crumbly as you're painting, it's almost drying on contact, then yeah, you can absolutely mix, um, you know, add a little bit of paint to it. So I always have a spray bottle on hand just with water in it whenever I am painting because paint is, you know, chalk style type paint best friend. So you can just spritz a little bit of water onto the surface and that will really just make the, the paint nice and thin. Um, and so that's completely fine if you feel like it's too thick. Um, Susan's asking, can she use her Annie Sloan brushes? Absolutely. So if you have brushes already, um, you can absolutely use those. I will say this, however. So you, I do prefer to use a natural bristle brush for the Jolie paint. So for instance, um, this is another brush that we sell. It's called a shortcut brush. So this is a this is a synthetic brush, okay? It's got very smooth bristles on it. This is an in, inexpensive brush. It's, I don't know, $5.95 or something. And it's not going to last you very long. It's not going to, you know, after like a few, you, if I did a whole kitchen with this, it'd probably be destroyed. Um, but it's five bucks. So, you know, who cares? So, but I wouldn't use this for like a chalk style type of a paint just because it just doesn't lay the paint on quite as nicely. But the Annie Sloan brushes are natural bristle, so you're A-OK -okay to use those. I just personally don't like to use um, a synthetic brush. I don't find that the paint goes on quite as nicely. So Andrea is asking, is this chalk paint? So I'm going to give my little spiel that I give all the time. So chalk paint is technically trademarked by Annie Sloan. So it's kind of like saying Post-It or Kleenex. Those things are trademarked. So although there's many tissues and there's many tissues that are fantastic and probably equally as good as Kleenex, if not better, um, it's not technically a Kleenex. So that is the same way with chalk paint. So we used to carry Annie Sloan chalk paint and about a year and a half ago, um, she made the decision to move her manufacturing from the United States, which is where our paint, that sweet piece is always sold, was made. It was made here in the United States. The manufacturing was moved to Europe. When that happened, obviously the product changed because it's not, we don't have the same raw materials. Um, 
and Annie Sloan makes her paint differently in Europe than she than she did here in the United States. Um, so the product changed. When we tested the product, we felt the best decision for our customers because our decisions are always based on our customers and what our customers are going to love. Um, we felt the best option was to go to the Jolie brand of paint. So that is what we now carry. This particular product is made by the same manufacturer that made the Annie Sloan paint that Sweet Pieces always sold. So this product will feel very familiar to you if you had used the Annie Sloan paint in the past. Um, you are going to love it even more. You have even more color choices, but you also have great matches, color matches to the old palette that we used to carry. So if you need help matching something, um, you can give us a call and we can guide you on doing so. Okay, let me just see if I had any other questions here. Bonnie, hi Bonnie, how are you doing? Good stuff. Um, okay, do they make a light sage green? And what primer did I use? Okay, so let me, I'll bounce back to that. So the primer that I use, I feel like I say the same thing over and over. I'm, I'm a broken record, I apologize. Um, it's the best primer out on the market. I can feel very confident saying that because... I test a lot of things. Um, this is the, the primer that we use. It is a stain blocking primer. It's by General Finishes. It is a little bit pricey, but it I promise you, it is well worth the investment. Um, hands down, no doubt about it, this is the best stain blocking primer out on the market. Um, this is manufactured by General Finishes, which is a boutique manufacturer located in Wisconsin, right here in the good old US of A. And they have amazing manufacturing facilities and they're a small enough company that they can, they basically develop all their companies or all of their products rather. And when you're a very large company, uh, like a Sherwin-Williams or a Benjamin Moore, it can be challenging to bring in new products or new ingredients to your products because think about the supply chain and how much is out there and, and how much marketing has gone into something. So to switch gears and move to a new ingredient, a new resin, a new um, you know glue or, or additive, to move to that kind of stuff is can be very challenging as a very large company. But for somebody like General Finishes, they can be a bit more nimble um, so I know for a fact that those big companies haven't gotten their hands on this particular new formulation that General Finishes has created. So like I said, it is the very best um, stain blocking primer that's out there. Um, I'm even amazed by it myself. So I'm just going to quickly show you here. Melissa, I think, was asking about light sage green. So this Petit Chateau, which is a great max match to Annie Sloan's Versailles, um, this is a gorgeous color. So that's one option that you have. Um, we also have, uh, let's see here, where is it? Um, okay, so eucalyptus is another gorgeous one. So here's eucalyptus. And eucalyptus is actually a new Jolie color. So it's, um, you know, it's it, there is no match in the Annie Sloan line. This is a, a new color for Jolie, which is gorgeous. And then we also have... And let's see here, where is it? Why am I not seeing it? There it is. We also have Sage, which is a really pretty, this is a little bit darker of a green than the Petite Chateau. So this is another option for you. And then in this color mixing guide, we also have a lot of other options for some sage, pretty Sage greens um, by mixing. So this, you know, we can help you out with this if you need help picking a color, we can guide you on the ratios and everything that you should be using. So um, once you get your couple of coats of paint onto your cabinets and you're happy with how solid they are and um, the look, then you can go, go ahead and move on to the next step. So the next step would be either you're happy with them and you're going to seal them with wax or it would be adding on another layer of dimension. So it's a rare day at Sweet Pieces that we just paint one color and seal it up. So what I'm gonna show you is like a glazing technique. It's, it's called a color wash, and I'm gonna show you how to do that using Scumble. 
So when I did my mother-in-law's kitchen cabinets last week and showed you guys, I did a glaze over the General Finishes milk paint. So today I'm going to be doing a similar technique, but I am going to use different products because I just want you to understand this. General Finishes furniture paint, General Finishes furniture paint, and Jolie chalk style paint are two very, very different products, okay? Um, I knew nothing about paint when I started this company, almost nothing, except that I liked to use it a lot. <laughs> I was the spray paint queen before I started Sweet Pieces. I just spray painted everything. Um, there are different types of paints. So you have to be careful when you're choosing a product. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on at Sweet Pieces. If we've done a lot of research and we've done a lot of projects, so we understand how these products work. So, um, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and, um, you know, get guidance on which products that you want to use. Also, we are currently offering free virtual consultations. So we have a form on our website. You can go on there. You can enter in your information, name, phone number, email. You can link pictures to it and tell us what you want to do. And we will send you back recommendations for products based on whatever technique that you're looking to achieve. So General Finishes Furniture Paint is an acrylic based paint. The matte finish paint does not have acrylic in it. It doesn't have plastic in it. So it's more like a stone, a clay, a mineral, okay? It's crumbly. So when it dries in the side of the can, um, and this isn't a good example because I've actually cleaned this can nicely. Let me, I'm sure I have one here. Here we go. Um, this one you can kind of see. This has like a crumbly can. So do you see like it's chunky and crumbly. Like you guys know, if you if you get a can of latex paint, that's not going to happen to it. It might fill up and get gunky and it'll be gummy, but the um, Jolie paint or chalk style type paints, they're different, you know, and, and there's also a difference between chalk paints. Um, you know, some paints, they say it's chalk paint and they literally take latex paint and add chalk to it. That doesn't make it chalk paint. It's more about what's not in it, so it doesn't have those plastics in it. So you want to make sure that you're choosing a good quality product that has or doesn't have the ingredients that you're looking for. Um, so anyway, two totally different paints. So they you need different products for those paints. So Jolie paint, I like to use my natural bristle brushes. I'm going to use wax to top coat it general finishes, I'm going to use synthetic brushes, and I'm going to use top coats to seal it. So two different products that require two different sets of rules. Um, we just launched on the website, I think, right, Julie, um, our brand new kitchen cabinet guides. So if you are going to attempt to do your kitchen cabinets, we have a page on each product for the step-by-step -step of how to do your kitchen cabinets with each one of these products. And, you know, a lot of times we get phone calls and people say, oh, well, I have this other paint, you know, can I do the same technique? I don't have quite as much um, experience with other products. Be and don't get me wrong, I try a lot of other products because I want to make sure that we're offering the very best. Um, but these products, time after time, they are the best. They're just the best. We, and trust me, we, you should see the cabinet we have in the store that has all of the demo products that, you know, co other companies have sent us and we've tried. And um, these two product lines are the very best. So anyway, um, make sure you visit the website and I'm, I'll show you that in a little bit as well to get those kitchen cabinet guides so you know exactly what to do. So now I am going to show you how to do a glaze-like finish um, on the Jolie matte finish paint. So let me tilt you guys down here. Oh, and I have a couple of questions here. Okay, so Donna asks, can you paint laminate ca laminated cabinets? Yes, you can. So in my mother-in-law's kitchen, um, part of like the doors were solid wood, but some of the frames weren't, and some of it was like press board, some of it was laminate. Um, we've painted for mica. So you can use both products, Jolie and General Finishes, to paint laminate, veneer, all, you know, all of that good stuff. So yes, Donna, go for it, girl. What's what's holding you back? <laughs> um, Melissa 
is asking, she used antique white and she thinks it's too plain looking. How could you add maybe the Petit Chateau to it? So, um, so yes, you can absolutely do the Petit Chateau in this same exact technique that I'm going to be doing. So, so take a look at this. And then Andrea had a question. She found that the Annie Sloan paint wore off. Will this happen on the cabinets? So I'm curious, Andrea, as I'm working on this, if you could answer this for me, um, when and where did you buy that Annie Sloan paint from? So answer that question for me and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna just move you guys down here. Okay, here is a product that you're gonna need. So this is called Scumble. Scumble is a glazing medium that works very, very well with the Jolie fin matte finish paint, chalk style paint. Um, p some people say, can I use another glaze? You, well, I will tell you I've had experience using a different type of glaze and it doesn't always work quite as well. Um, so I would say you're kind of on your own there. You can certainly try it. I did it once on a cabinet for a designer, it was a custom project that I was working on and I put painter's tape on it. I peeled off the painter's tape and I peeled off my entire job. I had to completely redo the cabinet. I will tell you that there were a lot of tears that day um, and I will never use another glazing medium over chalk style paint except for scumble. <laughs> So that is my answer. So here's your scumble. This comes in two sizes on the website, eight ounce and quart. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip my brush into the scumble and I'm just going to brush a thin, quick layer onto my piece. So I'm just covering this. This is what we call a slip coat. By the way, we have product guides on the website that tell you exactly step by step what to do with each one of the products that we carry at the store. So Scumble is one of those product guides. So if you can't remember everything I say in this video, you could just jump right over to our product guides page and review all of the information at your leisure. So I have put on a slip coat, okay? Now glaze, the, the definition of glaze is that it extends the open time. So it makes it harder for it to dry. It makes it, uh, it takes longer for it to dry. So I work in sections when I do the scumble slip coat. So if I were doing a door, I would do a door at a time. I'm gonna put my scumble slip coat on. I'm gonna dip my brush into a little bit of paint. So this is Noir, okay? Um, so base coat on this cabinet is linen. Then I did a slip coat of scumble, and now I have a little bit of noir on my brush, and I'm going to brush this on, okay, everywhere. And I don't need a lot. And actually, I'm doing this, and I'm doing it wrong. Um, what I should be doing, and what I should have told you guys to do, but my brain is going a mile a minute today, is I should be taking my scumble, putting a little bit onto a plate or into a container, taking a little bit of my Noir and mixing it with that. And basically what you have just done is you've created a black glaze. So I apologize, this wasn't um, thinning out as nicely as I would like it to. And then I realized I missed a step. See, even I make mistakes. <laughs> Okay, so now that I have my mixture here, I'm gonna re-dip, and it's fine, it, it'll go on, okay. Um, if I were doing a big cabinet, it might have been a little bit of a, more of a disaster, but it's all good. So now I'm gonna spread this all out. So basically with the scumble, you can create a glaze out of any one of the colors. Um, you're not restricted by anything, um, you just mix half scumble and half paint and again you want to use this with the Jolie so I wouldn't I don't use scumble with general finishes I use the general finishes glaze I use scumble for the Jolie paint I have my shop towel and I'm just going to wipe this back okay so now you can see hopefully you can see let me just 
prop this up for you. By the way, I got a fun new toy for videos. I'm pretty excited. I'll be using it next week um, so that I could do some really nice overhead shots for you guys. So we, so it'll be a little bit easier than this, better than this. Okay, so now you can kind of see like that heavy dark has kind of collected in the crevices, which is what I like. I'm able to really control this and wipe it back. And um, I was talking before about doing this with the Petit Chateau. So yeah, you could take that antique white and put um, do a little bit of Petit Chateau over it with a glaze, in a glaze type of a format, and it would be really pretty. So there we go. So now, you know, you wipe back until you get the look that you want. Okay. So you can see here, I got my pretty door. I call this kind of like a restoration hardware finish. Um, and with the magic of television, ta-da, now it's dry. <laughs> this was the second one I did earlier. Um, so now you can kind of see, like I have, you know, this kind of glazy, washy type of a finish. Um, that's probably going to take anywhere from an hour or so to dry. Uh, depending on how much scumble you use, it could take up to a few hours because again, scumble extends the dry time. So that's what it's supposed to do. It's doing its job. So you just have to wait until it's dry. Um, I'd probably give it a few hours and depending on how much uh, scumble you use, if you use a lot of it, if you're very heavy handed with it, it could take um, you know, six to 12 hours for it to dry. But usually when you're doing, you know, a big kitchen cabinet job, it's really not an issue because by the time you get done with one coat, either you want to, um, you know, your day is going to end or, you know, you can move on to the boxes or, you know, there's always something to do basically. Um, okay. So let me go back to what Andrea said. So Andrea, uh, did she answer? Let's see. Our store, okay. All right, so what I wanted to make sure, Andrea, was that you weren't, you, you didn't purchase the new Annie Sloan product that is being made in Europe, that you did actually purchase it from us. Um, so can your paint wear away? Sure, your paint can wear away. And we, I mean, it depends on how it's used. It depends on how it was sealed. Um, you know, if you use spray bleach on your products, uh, on your pieces of furniture, or if it's something that's really high use, um, you can get wear, a wearing effect with um, either the Annie Sloan paint or the Jolie paint. The nice thing about the product is that it doesn't chip or peel. So it's not going to start looking, you know, like it's it's flaking off and, and it looks like it was a bad paint job. You can get wear. I mean, that can certainly happen. So will it happen on kitchen cabinets? Again, it kind of depends. If you're taking like bleach spray and you're scrubbing down the cabinets all the time, could it wear away? Sure, it could. Um, the beauty of using the Jolie is that it's very easily touched up. So if you do wear it away or you get a scuff mark or, or a scratch mark or, you know, I know like on my garbage can cabinet, that one has kind of worn away. And that was the manufacturer finish. Not I had I did not paint my own kitchen cabinets yet. That's coming. <laughs> um so on those very, very high use areas, could it wear away? Sure, it can. Um, it just depends on how much you kind of, you, you batter them. But like my kitchen cabinets, I came from the manufacturer. I can't really touch those up. Number one, I don't have the exact paint that they used. Um, also, those are like a typical polyurethane sealed type of a product. So um, I would have to redo the whole door. I'd have to, you know, sand everything down and then redo it. Whereas with the Jolie paint, if I do get scuff scratch marks, it's so easy to um, just easily touch it up, which is one of the beautiful things that I love about um, the Jolie paint, the chalk style paints. Um, okay, now I will say, however, that the um, general finishes paint is made differently. So is that going to wear away the same way? Probably not. And again, it also depends on what kind of prep work you do and what kind of um, sealing you do, okay? So, you know, think about this. When you buy kitchen cabinets 
from a manufacturer, you know, a Home Depot or, you know, custom cabinet place, they are going through a process. They're priming, they're painting, they're sealing, they're leaving time in between, they're letting it cure. You can do all of those things. It just depends on how much time you want to spend. Now, when I did my mother-in-law's kitchen this past week, I took every precaution because that woman beats her kitchen like nobody I've ever seen. So I wanted to make sure that this was going to hold up really, really well to her 100 times a day spray bleach cleaning, my daughter opening and banging the clot, the cabinets, um, you know, all the other bazillion people that are in her house when we're not under quarantine. Um, so I wanted to make sure it was really, really durable. Now my own kitchen, I'm not going to get that crazy over because number one, I don't cook. <laughs> my husband does all of that. Um, and I have one child and she's only slightly destructive. <laughs> so it really, it depends on how you're going to use your kitchen. Um, and it also depends on how much time you want to spend. Now, for me, I'm also, I've, I've told you guys, I'm like a lazy DIYer, so I don't want to spend a whole ton of time. Now, I will when I have to, like I did with my mother-in-law's kitchen. Um, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. So s sometimes I choose to just go the Jolie route because it's very easy and it looks beautiful. And if it needs a touch-up every now and again, I can do that. It takes me five minutes. Um, you know, with the wax, people say, is the wax durable? The wax is very durable. If it's applied correctly, if you give it time to cure, if it's buffed correctly, um, it's very, very durable. And if I get a mark in it, it's very easy for me to touch up. Um, I did my island in my kitchen is done in the, um, like a chalk type paint. So, you know, I have a dog and I had two cats at the time when I had first painted it that rub up against it and their oils and the hair it get all over it. it. If I have to clean it, it takes two seconds. It comes right off. I've, I've had to touch up the wax a couple times and it's, it's done. It's, it takes five minutes. It's just like cleaning it. Just get a wax rag out and you just buff it off and it's good to go. So it kind of, it depends on you know, what your expectations are. Do you expect them to look like a factory finished cabinet? Then you should probably use the general finishes furniture paint. If you want them, if you just need a quick update, you don't want to spend a lot of time. Maybe you're only going to be in your kitchen for another couple of years. Maybe it's just a holdover until you can get your, your kitchen done. Um, you know, you don't feel like taking off all the doors. You're not interested in spraying things. I'd quickly throw a couple coats of Jolie on there, throw a couple coats of wax, and it will be fine. It's not like it's going to start chipping and flaking off. It depends on what your expectations are. The other thing to think about is what the what you want the finish to be. So if you are going for just a bright white finish, then I am 100% hands down going to recommend using the general finishes. Um, a bright white finish is one of the hardest finishes to create in painting, period. Um, because most substrates, whatever you're painting on, uh, have a history. You know, they have tannins and stains and dyes and, and everything else. And that's, you know it's it's not a great combination for bright white paint that stuff is it's going to bleed through so um when i am doing if i want a bright white finish or i don't want it to it, or even a lighter finish a light gray a really pale gray i am going to make sure that i prime so do i always have to use a primer no so if i were doing kitchen cabinets in this linen color that i just showed you um I would not prime this, okay? If I were doing it in any of the whites or the very light grays, then yes, I'm going to go ahead and prime it. So in the general finishes line, Snow White, a million percent is getting primed. Um, Antique White, definitely getting primed. Linen, probably gonna prime it. Um, alabaster, which is what I did my mother-in-law's kitchen cabinets in, I primed it. Um, probably ballet pink, I would prime. And then probably Reverend Gray, which by the way is a gorgeous color. Um, that color I would prime as well. So if I'm going to go through 
the pain <laughs> and process of priming, I'm probably going to use general finishes paint. If I want to get it done one, two, three, then I'm probably going to use the Jolie paint. Um, and I'm not going to do a bright white finish. Now, if I were doing a white finish with like a gray wash or a linen wash, and I was going to kind of mask that bright whiteness uh, with another technique, then I might just do that with the Jolie. So it kind of, again, it just kind of depends uh, which route you're going to go. Um, you know, do, do I recommend wax or top coat on either one of the products? So, well, let me start here. Jolie, you're going to use wax on. We also have a varnish. That's a brand new product that we just um, got in. It's a clear acrylic top coat. It's a varnish. It comes in two sheens, a low luster and a, um, a gloss finish. So you can use this on furniture, on cabinetry, but even though, and I'm sure it says it on here or something, yeah, durable and non-yellowing, if that does not mean that you can throw a bright white paint on your cabinets and put this on and it's not gonna yellow. This product is not gonna yellow. So over time, you know, the sun beating on it, it's not gonna yellow. But if you have tannins or anything in the wood underneath and you put this on top of bright white, there's a very good chance it is going to turn yellow. It's not this that's turning yellow. It's the, the substrate underneath it. So that's a very hard thing in the paint world. Um, is get maintaining those bright whites. And this is your very, very best chance of maintaining a bright white finish, I promise you. I've done this on a lot of pieces that were very badly stained, many of them during this wonderful quarantine we're in. So even though I believed in this product before pandemic, <laughs> during pandemic and, and post pandemic, I am going to be singing this product's praises for a very long time. Um, it is amazing at, you know, allowing you to maintain a bright white finish. So, um, Jolie, you're going to use the wax to seal it. The general finishes, you are going to use the high performance top coat to seal it. And then like I just, so this is the high performance and this is, we offer this in flat satin or gloss. By the way, I did my mother-in-law's cabinets in satin. That's our most popular color. Um, and then the, with the Jolie, you can also use the varnish. But again, I wouldn't use this on a white, a bright white, unless I was using primer as a base. Um, okay. So Claudia and Susan, I hope that answered your questions. It depends on the color that you're going to go for, whether or not you're going to use a primer. Um, let's see. So Angela said, how sturdy are these paints? Do they chip and do they stand up to heat emanating from the oven or stovetop? So, okay. So Jolie paint, in my experience, it does not chip or flake or peel away unless there is underlying issues. Like if you don't get all the grease off of your cabinets, um, then yeah, you could have chipping and peeling, but that's going to be with any paint. So you want to make sure that you're properly prepping your piece, you're cleaning it really, really well. And then with the general finishes, there are additional um, prep steps, like you're going to have to um, lightly sand your pieces, okay, that's one thing, lightly sand. Um, you're going to clean with denatured alcohol and water, and then you're also going to wipe everything down with a tack cloth. So those are the steps that you need to take with general finishes for your prep. Um, don't skip any of those. If you don't skip those, then Angela, I would feel very confident saying that the paint is not gonna chip or peel. It's gonna hold up very, very nicely. As far as the heat, um, you know, typically over your stovetop, you have a range hood. You have something that's kind of sucking up the heat. So it's really not gonna get that hot. Um, so I think you would be fine. Now, if you don't have a range hood, um, then I guess it could. I mean, I, I'm not really, I, I will say this. We've been in business eight years. Our clients have done a lot of kitchen cabinets. We've done a lot of kitchen cabinets. I really don't get, I, I, I can't remember a time when anybody came back to us and said, this is not holding up well. 
um, I wouldn't be doing this. I would be fielding phone calls all day long on uh, troubleshooting if that were the case. So I, as long as you're properly prepping the pieces and we are going to guide you on that, depending on which product line you choose, I can, I feel very confident in saying that they will hold up very, very well. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions. What about the edges? When do you do those? So I typically do those as I'm going. Um, here's the other thing. with You can spray both of these products. So you can spray the general finishes. You can also spray the Jolie with a, with a paint sprayer, which we will be getting in stock very soon. Um, the, the Jolie paint does need to be thinned out quite a bit because it is a thicker paint. Um, although the general finishes is pretty thick as well, that did get thinned out also when I did it. So if you're going to spray, if you don't want to spray and you don't want to take off all the cabinet doors and you know, you make sure you got to make sure you label everything. So you know exactly, you don't want to, you know, mix up a door, not know where it's going back. You have to make sure that you're labeling everything properly. Um, if you don't want to go through that hassle, then I would use the Jolie paint. I would paint them right on the hinges. And honestly, you know, that's a project that you don't have to do it, you know, get it done consecutively in five days. You could, you know, do a door, a, a few doors a night. You could do a couple boxes a night. Like you don't have to be, um, you know, so like I, my mother-in-law's kitchen, I had to get it done. Like we, we pulled the doors off and I had to just, I had to just do it for her. Um, cause she couldn't live without her kitchen. So, you know, it depends again on what your expectations are, how much time you have and how you want to kind of live through the process. Um, so Susan, when I was spraying the doors, basically what I would do is I had these laid, um, they were raised up. So they had like two by four, two by four on like a sawhorse. And I would spray, spray, spray all around all of the edges. And then I sprayed the, the actual top of the door. When I'm painting, like hand painting them, I am going to do the edges first. So I do edge, 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 and then I fill in everything else. Um, so it just, you know, and everybody has their own way of doing things. That's not like 100% the right way. It's just the way that I like to do that. Um, what do I think about gentlemen's Navy on lower cabinets? I think that's a great idea, Susan. So we have seen a lot of this clients love to do like an accent color on the bottom and then do like a white on the top. I know Julie just moved into her house. She's thinking about doing alabaster on the top and a gray on the bottom. So yeah, you can absolutely do, um, do that. That would be very, very pretty. So let's see. Melissa has to go. Totally fine. This is going to be posted right after we end. Um, and then Christine asked, do I recommend general finishes or Jolie? So again, I kind of went through this a little bit. It really depends on what your expectations are. Um, if you want a factory looking finish, you probably should use general finishes. Um, but understand it is going to be more work. Uh, there's going to be more prep work involved. Um, you need to make sure, you know, my mother-in-law's cabinets are oak, so they had a lot of grain in them. So you, you kind of have to fill all that in. And I was able to do it with the paint itself. Um, but if it were, if it were, had been more grainy, I may not have had to do, I may not have been able to do that. I may have had to pre-fill all of the grain with like a wood filler. So the, you know, if you want it to look like a factory, there's going to be more work that goes into it. Um, I can promise you that if you hate your kitchen, you're ready to get rid of it, that if you paint it with either one of the product lines, you're going to love it. It's going to be way better than what you have. And it's going to be way less expensive than buying a brand new kitchen. So don't kill yourself over this decision. Um, but I will say that using the general finishes product is a bit more labor intensive, but it is going to give you more of a factory looking finish. And I, I even hate saying that because the Jolie paint is phenomenal and it's beautiful. And sometimes for me, it's even easier to work with than, than the general finishes, but it's really all about, um, you know, just spending a little bit of time kind of working with it. So um, yes, I know, Bonnie. I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. It's it's amazing. Um, Susan's asking, can she use any Sloan wax? 
So yes, you can use Annie Sloan wax on Jolie paint. You can use Jolie wax on Annie Sloan paint, okay? Either or. This is what I will say. The Jolie wax is new, okay? It's brand new. So it's going to feel different than the Annie Sloan wax. So if you're used to applying Annie Sloan wax, the Jolie wax is way easier to apply than the Annie Sloan wax. So um, yes, 100%, it would be totally fine. But one of the things that I loved about switching to the Jolie line, it was kind of like the it sealed the deal for me, um, is the fact that the wax is so different and it's so easy to use. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it right now. Um, so I'm going to zoom you in here a little bit and make sure I have everything I need, okay. And yes, Susan, I do paint, I did paint the fronts and backs of the doors. Do you have to? No, I mean, there's no, there's no cabinet police that are going to come to your house and check to see if the insides are painted. Um, it's really up to you. But I mean, you, if you open your cabinet, you should, the inside of the door probably should be painted. Okay, so I have my, um, my trusty shop towel. I have my clear finishing wax. And by the way, when I'm using the Jolie paint, I'm only going to use the clear wax if I'm doing cabinets. We at Sweet Pieces don't recommend that you use any of the colored waxes on kitchen cabinets um, because of the maintenance issue. So I told you that you know it's very easy to maintain uh, kitchen cabinets if you get scuffs or scratches by using wax. If you use the colored waxes, it's a, it's a little bit um, harder to maintain it because then you have to make sure that everything is matching and you're not rubbing away any of the colored waxes. So it's much easier to do a technique like this, do like a color wash or a glazing type of an effect. And then this is in, this is sealed in. So then you don't, you know, you're just basically messing with your wax. So I put, this is um, one of our Jolie wax brushes. I put a bit of wax onto my brush here. And then I'm basically just going to paint it on. And, you know, we always say at Sweet Pieces, if you're working harder to wax than you did to paint, you're doing something wrong. Um, you can see I'm, I'm just, I'm like dusting this on. I'm not giving myself tennis elbow or, you know, breaking a sweat here. Um, I'm just brushing this on. And I don't think that you guys can see this on camera. Um, you're you really aren't going to see a whole heck of a lot of difference. So it's, you want to kind of be methodical about this. Um, you know, I went on the inside first and now I'm going to the outer edges. So you, because you want to remember kind of where you went. And if you don't, and you're like, oh gosh, what did I do? You just touch it and you'll feel it. So like, this is all kind of tacky. And then I haven't done this yet. This is still smooth or chalky rather. Um, so I'm going to brush this on. Something that we used to tell clients all the time with the Annie Sloan wax is that you have to work in small sections, work quickly, and then wipe it back immediately. With the Jolie wax, you don't have to worry about wiping it back right away. You can leave this. So I have put on my coat of wax. I can leave this for however long. And then when I'm ready, I'm just gonna come in with my wax rag and I'm just gonna buff it off. And basically this is buffing. And again, this is different than the Annie Sloan wax. The Annie Sloan wax used to be like, it was hard, like it made ee, 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 ee. Whereas this is just, it's more buttery and smooth. So I'm just kind of rubbing this. You know, and you can, I don't know if you can see this, let me zoom in on this for you. Do you see my edge here? So this is like my primer that's coming through. Um, I've done like three coats of this paint in an hour or two. So it really hasn't had a whole heck of a lot of time to dry. But this that's also a beauty of this paint is that it's it almost gives you like a, a distressed finish without having to do a lot of work. Um, so again, if you don't want that type of a look, then you may want to go with the general finishes um, paint. Um, now, you can do multiple layers of wax. 
So I'm just gonna add another quick coat. Normally we say wait about 24 hours in between coats and that will give you the most durable finish. Um, but I'm just gonna throw another quick coat on here just to show you guys. The more coats of wax that you put on, the shinier your wax is going to get. The other thing is that I can uh, wait a bit. The longer I wait, the higher of a shine that I'm going to get when I buff my wax off. So I'll give that a few minutes to dry while I chat with you guys and then I'll come back and do a little bit of buffing. So um, basically, you know, we, we usually recommend like two to three coats of wax if you're doing something high use like a kitchen. Um, and that's not, you know, when you do a coat of wax, it's almost inevitable that you're not going to get everywhere because it's, it's hard to see it. You can't always, you know, so we do one coat and then that second coat is going to kind of even everything out and kind of meld everything together. And we always also like to refer to wax, um, applying wax, almost like applying hand cream. So, um, think about it this way. If you are applying hand cream, you know, you squeeze out as much as you need for whatever area you're working on, if you're doing your hands, so squeeze out enough, and you rub it in, and you rub it in, and you go in all different directions, and the point is to get it all rubbed in. If I go and I put another coat of moisturizer on, it's not like I'm gonna see overlap on where I've put hand cream, um, it's just gonna kind of build up a thicker layer, and that's essentially what you're doing with wax. Now, when you do top coat, um, it's not like that. If you miss an area of top coat and you go over it with a second coat, it's only still one coat. Whereas with the wax, it kind of like melds together. So um, we refer to applying top coat like applying nail polish. You know, you're painting it on in one direction. You want to do even coats. Whereas applying wax is more like hand cream or like buttering bread. You know, you want to get that butter, you know, spread out nice and evenly. Um, okay, so let's see what other questions I have. Do the same rules go for stained wood? Yes, same thing, Susan. So if you have stained wood bathroom cabinets, um, you can use Jolie, you can use general finishes. I will say, um, you know, we I used the Jolie in my bathroom on a... MDF cabinet. It wasn't even real wood. It's in perfect condition. So I don't want you guys to feel like one paint is better than the other. It just depends. Um, that's my guest bathroom. It is also the bathroom that I bathe my daughter in every night. So it's not like it doesn't ever get used. It does. That's where she keeps all her toys. She's opening and closing it. She's newly potty trained, so her potty's right next to it. I'm sure there's, you know, a little bit of pee pee that's splashing on there. So, and it's it's in perfect, perfect condition. There's not one chip or scratch or anything in it. So it it will hold up very, is it something that I spray down every day with bleach or splatter grease all over? No, it's not. Um, so the kitchen is different. I think the kitchen table or the dining table is also different. That's something that you're really scrubbing down. I don't really consider a bathroom vanity something that's high use, you know, unless you have like four boys that are, you know, in a very tiny bathroom, you know, that's different. So like for me, it's me, my husband, my daughter, my dog. Um, I don't consider my bathroom vanity like a high use type of a thing. Um, okay. So Jennifer. Okay. So she's, she was referring to a friend uh, Jennifer is using general finishes for her kitchen cabinets. Julie was awesome. Yes, she is at helping with all her questions. W yes, please send pictures. Um, we love seeing before and afters. Um, okay, so Nicole, by the way, Nicole is an amazing artist in our building. Um, I don't know if you guys caught our live shop tour the other day on Friday. Um, she is one, the artist that creates those beautiful collages of you know women that like to have the giant eyelashes and they're stunning so definitely um check out nicole's artwork but nicole's asking does the wax come in clear and dark like the old ones yes it does so it comes in um clear it comes in brown it comes in black and it comes in white so you do have options for your wax as well and same rules apply as far as you always want to make sure that you're putting your clear wax on first 
and then you're layering your colored waxes on top. And I'll also say that um, I love the new brown Jolie wax because it's a really, it's a really pretty brown. It's not like a like a reddish brown. It's it's like a really, it's a good like coffee espresso brown, which is you know what I think we're kind of all going for these days. Um, okay, let me see if I have any other questions here. Okay, all right, so once you're done, um, let me angle you guys down one more time here. Um, once you guys are done with your waxing, and you can even see, I can see on camera here, this has a bit of a sheen to it already. Let's see, and this, see this one does too, but that's because it it's not dry yet, so you can kind of see like where the glaze is still drying, but let me just see something here. Let's see if I put this like this. Let's see. So, okay, ignore this shininess because that's just because it's not dry yet. But do you see how this has more sheen and this looks more flat? So that's because of that wax. And I haven't even really buffed this off yet. Um, so as I buff this, and again, I'm not rubbing hard. I'm just, you know, I'm just buffing. You can start to see you can see that shine just coming up really nicely. So some people say, oh, well, the wax isn't shiny enough for me. The wax can be shiny. It's just, you know, just might take a couple of coats. But again, it's not like it's like really hard work. Um, you know, it's just a little bit of elbow grease, but not a whole ton. Um, I would say, okay, let me answer this question. I, I'm, not, I'm just thinking how a customer would want to approach this which one is easier so easier being i'm going to get it done faster um you know probably jolie um which one is going to be more durable to me cooking up a storm and spraying everything down with bleach probably general finishes um so they have they both have their advantages and um, different points. So it really just, it kind of just depends. So you can see now this has a really, it's got a nice shine to it. See that? Um, that had two quick coats of wax on it. Um, and it's going to be durable. It's definitely going to be durable. If I take a, a green scrubby sponge and, sp and bleach spray and start to scrub this down, it could, it could get you know, you could kind of wear some of the paint away. Is it going to start chipping and flaking off? No, it'll probably start to wear away and look distressed. So I hope that I've kind of like answered your questions as far as which paint product to use. Um, there's really no right or wrong answer. Both paints um, serve a purpose, um, you know, for different reasons. And, you know, here's the other thing. When you go into a store like a Home Depot or Lowe's, they sell so many different brands of products. And a lot of times they're doing it, you know, their buyers, their, their buyers are not testing those products. They're just buying whatever the manufacturers are offering to them. Um, whereas we're different at Sweet Pieces. You know, I could offer every chalk style paint that's out there. Um, but we don't because we feel like we want to offer our customers the very best options and we want to be able to troubleshoot the products for you. We want to be able to create relationships with you to help guide you on your product choices. Um, and we feel that it's, it's our um, duty to test products that are out there and bring you the very best. So that's, that's what we do. And I feel so confident in having these two product lines at our disposal because they both they do what we want paints to do you know whereas I, sometimes i like to do like a really modern finish a glossy finish i'm going to use my general finishes paint for that with if i want to do a layered textured finish i want to create driftwood i'm going to use jolie for that um, if i want to get a project done really quickly I'm going to use Jolie for that. I'm just thinking back to a time, um, I guess it was about a year or so ago, uh, a little bit over a year ago, um, I went to my aunt's house in New Jersey, my Aunt Nancy, who 
has since passed and we miss her very, very much. But she had this, uh, and you know, God is in control. He, he knows everything that's happening. So I think back to this time because it's, it's kind of crazy that it worked out this way. I went to visit her with my mom and my daughter. We spent a weekend there and, um, we had such a great time. It was, it was so wonderful. And she was like, Mandy, I want you to paint this cabinet for me. Um, I'm dying for it to be turquoise. So she had told me this before we came. So I said, I'm going to bring the products and she's thinking it's going to be this whole big, long drawn out process. And it's going to take forever. I think it probably took me an hour to do the thing from start to finish. So it was a lingerie chest. It was probably this wide and about this tall. Um, I brought my gilding wax. I brought my malachite paint. I brought my crud cutter. I brought a couple of brushes. I brought my clear wax. That was it. And I crud cutted it. I waited five, 10 minutes. I painted it with the malachite. I let it dry. I put a second coat on it. I rubbed off the edges with um, a shop towel. I had those two. And then I added, I added my clear wax on the whole thing. I gilded waxed it and it was done and it was beautiful. And she was so excited. And she's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, it's, it's done. It's beautiful. So don't, you know, it, it depends. Now, is that something that she's going to spray down with bleach and cleaner and it's going to get, you know, food plopped on it every day? No, it was something that was going to be, you know, just kind of in the closet and have her jewelry in it. So, um, you know, it kind of, it depends on what your expectations are of your painted pieces. Like I said, some things that people think are high use, I don't necessarily consider it high use. You know, a, a guest room bathroom vanity, it's fine with the Jolie paint. And you could literally get it done in an hour. Um, you know, a guest bedroom, a little side table, like that kind of stuff, it's it's fine. You know, maybe if you're hard on your furniture in your master bedroom, you know, if you, like for me, I put a wet glass down on my side tables every single night. So I did gel stain on the top of my nightstands because I knew that that had to be durable. I did Jolie paint on the body with um, pure white. So, you know, it, it you have to kind of... Um, you have to kind of weigh those things. And that's also what we're here for. So you can send us your virtual consultations and we'll kind of guide you through step-by-step step and show you, um, you know, what products would be best for you to use. So do you want to see a before and after? Um, okay, so I'm going to show you with the iPad and I'll flip it around so you guys can see it the right way. So um, I showed you, I was in my mother-in-law's kitchen the other day. I told you I was a terrible DIYer because I forgot to take um, before pictures. But I actually had taken before pictures a long time ago when we were redoing her appliances. So <laughs> lucky for me, I had some. And these have some dimensions on them. So you'll just ignore those dimensions, but um, you'll get you'll get the gist of it. So Susan, let's see what Susan says. I'll be in tomorrow Wednesday. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Susan. We appreciate your business. Um, you know, you guys know we're available for curbside pickup right now and also shipping on the website. Okay, so here is... Tracy's kitchen. Okay. Here's, let me do it this way. Here's the before. Okay. Tracy has a tiny kitchen and you can see like, this is literally her kitchen. And then over here on this wall is a pantry cabinet, which I'll show you in one minute. So that was the before their Oak. Okay. This is her refrigerator there. You can see this is kind of, this is coming up the stairs, looking at it. Here's that pantry cabinet. That's right there. Um, that's another shot. Okay, so here you can see the pantry cabinet. There, more dimensions. Oh, and there's my daughter touching the new kitchen cabinets, by the way. And I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. So there's the after. Can you believe that? It's amazing. So Tracy is also getting a brand new backsplash and countertop. So that hasn't come in yet. We also, we changed out the molding. Um... We did a bigger crown molding. We built it up. It's actually three different pieces of molding. There's um, a builder board here and then a one by four that my uncle Freddie routed out to make look like a piece of molding. And then that is crown molding on the top. So amazing. This is actually not on the kitchen cabinet, but on my iPad screen. <laughs> so ignore that. Um, they are glazed. I don't know if you can tell, but you, you know, you can see they're not just solid white. They have 
like a little bit of detail to them, which is, you know, what we wanted. Um, here's another one. Here's another thing that we did. So this cabinet right here, um, it had two doors. So these are the two doors that I just painted for you today, but we are doing one door that is going to pull up. It's going to hinge up and it's going to have a big giant onlay ornate onlay on it because that's what Tracy loves. She likes big things that are over the top. So Susan, the, this is alabaster. And then I did a, um, I did a glaze and I mixed the glaze. I did half brown, a quarter black and a quarter white. And it basically makes like a taupey, a taupey color. And there's her pantry cabinet. So um, this came out gorgeous. And then by the way, this is like a window that's in her space. And I had done these window treatments for her, um, I guess about a year or two ago, because we knew that this kitchen rehab was coming. Um, so we were kind of a prep, prepping for it. And uh, the alabaster, these are draperies that we did in her kitchen. The alabaster really matched beautifully. And um, I think that was it. So that is, that is that. That is the before and after of Tracy's kitchen. We are going to be posting like more pictures, some more detailed stuff so you can see some of the details. Um, but like I said, you know, I really, I did her kitchen right. So just to give you a rundown, we cleaned, scrubbed the kitchen cabinets with the crud cutter. We sanded them. Now we didn't sand them completely to the raw finish. We sanded them to like scuff it and to, to break the surface tension. Um, we did use like a hand sander on the doors just cause it was, it's easier than using, you know, a piece of sandpaper cause the doors were off. Um, we cleaned them with denatured alcohol and water. Then we used a tack cloth to wipe everything down. Then I sprayed them with two coats of the primer, the stain blocking primer. I sprayed them with two coats of the alabaster paint. I put a coat of glaze on them. And then I put three coats of top coat. So in total there, I did eight coats on everything. It took me six and a half days while also running two other companies. <laughs> so I didn't just, you know, I wasn't just there the whole time for six days. Um, I was, you know, in between, and I don't know if you guys know, but I recently took over the decorating department at ABOFS. Um, so myself and one other gal have been running that company. Um, so, you know, I'm running back and forth to all the stores and, and, um, you know, doing all that. So if I had to say like, how long did it actually take me if I, you know, did it start to finish, like, you know, day, start a day to end of day, I would say probably it would have taken me maybe four days, like three or four days. Um, so you could tackle it. I think now is a great time to tackle it. If you, um, you know, if you're wanting to do that during quarantine and it is, it's something great to do with the family. I mean, we were all together and we were able to, um, you know, the, my husband helped a little bit and my mother-in-law helped a little bit. My father-in-law helped a little bit brother-in-law. So, we, you know, it was kind of like a, a joint effort, which was, which was nice. But of course I didn't let anybody touch anything that, you know, had to be done really well. <laughs> so I did all of the spraying and, and all of the glaze work and, and all the top coating. Um, they helped me a lot with all of the prep stuff. So anyway, that is, um, kitchen cabinets. So if you guys have questions, if you are thinking about tackling a project like this, I would highly recommend it and definitely come and chat with us about questions that you might have, your fears. We will help you get over that. Don't be afraid. It's just paint. Um, it's really hard to screw it up if you follow our directions. I mean, honestly, again, we've been in business for eight years and I have never had a client, not one, that called me and said, you wrecked my piece. It's all over. I had to throw it in the garbage. Um, if that was the case, they never called us and told us that, but we're very, very big on customer service. And I know that you guys know the ones who have worked with us, um, that we really, we are really here to guide you and help you through it. So if you are following our steps and using the products that we recommend, you're not going to have a problem. Um, because like I said, these products have been tested um, by us, you know, with many of our clients and, and, you know, we feel just as comfortable troubleshooting it as, 
you know the manufacturer does so i can definitely say uh i can definitely feel confident in saying that so let's see here susan bonnie's thinking about doing those cabinets that's exciting um susan asked what's the difference between alabaster and palace white let's see so alabaster is a general finishes color and palace white is a jolie color so let me look at these side by side here for you okay alabaster is definitely and okay so this this picture of alabaster is it i think it's it's darker than what it really is um it seemed pretty light it's almost like just a slight off white whereas palace is definitely brighter this is palace the second one it's definitely brighter than alabaster and by the way this is not these are the general finishes um color charts these are not true to color these are true to color these are actual uh, paint swatches so um i'm looking at palace white it's a bright white the alabaster is not quite as bright as that but not as yellow as it looks in the color chart hopefully that helps so Donna is saying eight coats total seems like a lot. Is that the case for all cabinets? No, it's not. So again, I don't know if you were on the whole time, Donna, but my mother-in-law is, um, I always say she should be the test kitchen for OXO, you know, OXO brand. Like they have like the heavy duty uh, kitchenware. She breaks everything. <laughs> she, she's this tiny little woman and she she just breaks everything she's very hard on things so i knew that i had to make her kitchen very very durable um if you were ordering cabinets from a manufacturer they probably put eight coats in total on those cabinets if not more um so is that technically the right thing to do bye bonnie i'll see you soon um it's technically what you should do, but do you have to? No, it depends on what you, how you use your kitchen. Um, could you get away with two coats of top coat? Probably, you know, could you get away with one coat of paint? Maybe, you know, if you do one coat of paint and, if, and it looks like it's completely solid to you, then you can, you can just do one coat. I do recommend if you're doing any of the whites that you do two coats of the primer. If you're using the primer so that you don't get that bleed through, I would highly recommend doing two coats. We've been burned on doing one coat and trying to get away with it. So do the two coats if you're trying to prevent any kind of bleed through on your cabinets. Um, if you're doing, you know, a mid-tone color, like a gray, um, you know, any of, you know, seagull gray, empire gray, um reverent you know i might still do a primer on that but any of these mid-tones even like the persian blue the basil any of those colors you might not have to do primer you could just go right to paint so then it would just be you know two coats of paint and three coats of top coat so it just it kind of depends and the other thing to think about is that it can go quickly so like i would spray a coat on the cabinets and by the time i was done I could go and flip them over and do a second coat on the back. So, you know, it kind of, it does go kind of quickly um, if you're doing it like a bit methodically. So kind of keep that in mind. So I'm glad it seems like you guys are, um, that this was helpful for you. And that's what we're here for. I'm, I, I want to be helpful for you. Um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We are here to help, here to guide you. And we appreciate your business. We we really do. You know, you're keeping us employed. You're keeping our business in business. So we, we thank you for that. Don't forget that we're also doing vintage sales as well. So we have the, um, the virtual vintage sales that we're offering on Instagram. And the handle that you're going to want to look for is the shops, S-H-O-P-S, at atsp for sweet pieces the shops at sp on instagram and you'll see all the vintage sales on there so if you're interested in something just shoot us a dm we'll send you an invoice and you can come and pick it up curbside in huntington we're open tuesdays to saturdays for curbside pickup um and so let's see mary did you have a question i agree this video in combo with the general finish last week is the best overview um i'm so glad that is what 
uh, we're here for. Thank you. I, I, you guys are very kind. You, you're going to make my head too big. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to close quickly by just reminding you guys to stay healthy. You know, keep that head of yours healthy. It's so important um, to maintain mental health right now. And I think that doing something fun and creative is a really, really great way to do that, to keep your mind kind of occupied. And, you know, we are spending so much time at home. So why not make your home feel like um, a space that you love to be in? I mean, it's so important. And so be grateful for what you have and enjoy it. Make sure you're getting that body moving, you know, do some yoga, make sure you turn off the dang news. We don't need to listen to Governor Cuomo anymore. I, I, he's, a, he's a wonderful person, but I just, we don't need to listen. I'll just read the bullet points <laughs> at the end of the night. So it can be very anxiety inducing. So turn off the news, turn on something positive, listen to K-Love 95.5, positive uplifting music, or turn on Joel, listen to a podcast, listen to something on Audible, learn something new. I mean, this is a great time. How often do we say, I don't have enough time to do this or that? This is a great time to learn something new. Go learn a language. Learn a, a skill that you wanted to learn. I mean, literally the world is at our fingertips between YouTube and Google. You can literally learn anything. So go learn something new and share with me. I'd love to hear, what are you learning? What is it that you want to learn? Um, I saw an advertisement yesterday for Babbel. Babbel is an app that teaches language. I'm like, I want to learn a new language. Maybe I'll learn a new language on top of running two companies. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I, we love helping you guys. And, uh, by the way, we are going to be coming live to you again on Thursday. And now I forgot what we were doing on Thursday. No, now I remember. Okay. So on Thursday, we're going to be doing, um, upholstery, new upholstery versus reupholstery, how to choose, when to choose, why to choose. And then I'm also going to be showing you how to choose fabrics. What are the best fabrics to choose? How do you mix patterns and textures? And so I'm going to be talking all about upholstery on Thursday because as you guys know, we also do that. We offer custom upholstery. So new pieces, um, you know, new. So like you would go into Ethan Allen or Raymore Flanagan and buy new sofa chairs, love seats, sectionals, ottomans. Sweet Pieces also offers that. Our products are made 100% in America. The fabric, the foam, the wood, the springs, everything is made in America. Let me revise that. 70% of the fabrics we offer are made in America. Um, and then we also do window treatments. So any kind of, you know, draperies, blind shades, all that stuff, we offer that as well. So anyway, I'll see you guys on Thursday at 2 o'clock to go over all, all things upholstery. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more? Subscribe now.